The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I went to seminary in Chicago, and one of the many things that I learned about how to live and how to move and how to survive in the city that didn't have to do with how to survive nine and a half months of winter every year were... Uh, I learned that traveling and especially driving through a city, through a major city, is highly overrated because after you get there and after you have done uh, battle, it seems, with the legions of people who are always on the roads, it is next to impossible to find a parking space. And so I learned really quickly in my time in Chicago how to use the mass transit system, how to navigate the buses, and how to navigate Chicago's version of a subway system, the L. And living as I did, almost at the very end of the L line, I got very adept at changing trains because you had to change trains to go into the city proper. And you got used to the fact that if everything was working as it was supposed to, and if you were fortunate enough to catch one of the express trains, you could make it to the center of the city in about an hour. If you weren't fortunate enough to catch a day when everything was working the way it was supposed to, or if you missed the express train, it could take you anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours to get there. So you got used to just kind of sitting and just finding your little zen spot because you knew you were gonna be on the train until almost everybody else got off. And I learned to listen to the automated messages because there was one in particular that I needed to pay attention to. It was the one that told me to get ready to change trains. And as you were moving along in the stations, you would eventually hear, as you pulled into the last station on the line, this is Howard, as far as this train goes. All passengers must exit the train at Howard. And unless the CTA has changed that announcement, that is it verbatim because I heard it a number of times. And I knew that when I heard that, I had to get ready to shift to the line that would take me home, that I was almost to my destination, and that I was finally going to be freed from the subway system. Today is the end of our church year. It is a day when we get ready to shift gears, when we get ready to change trains, so to speak, and we get ready to move into the season of Advent. We get ready to move into looking for this, both the second coming of Jesus and remembering and celebrating his first coming at Christmas. But before we do that, before we can make that shift, we're invited to 
think about all that we've learned and celebrated and observed over the course of this year, and we're invited to think about what it means for us as people who follow Jesus to celebrate him as King of kings and Lord of lords, what it means for us to celebrate this Sunday, which is known as Christ the King Sunday. And the lessons that we have appointed for today are all lessons that talk to us both about what divine kingship looks like and what it means for us as people who follow Jesus to live into that in our lives and to emulate the example that we're given. <clears throat> our readings start out with King David's last recorded words to his people, speaking about how God's kingship is one that strives for justice, that strives for peace, that strives to create a space where God's people can flourish to be that light to the nations that we're called to be. And then our next lessons speak to us about Jesus being that example of kingship. Our gospel lesson can seem a bit strange because it feels a little bit out of place because the lesson that we just heard is one that we normally hear during Holy Week, that we normally hear on Good Friday. And we find Jesus standing before Pilate, talking about what it means for him to be a king. Pilate is actually amazed that Jesus has been charged with saying that he's king of the Jews because Pilate's experience of Jesus standing before him, both literally standing before him as a prisoner, but also what he's heard about who Jesus is and what Jesus has been doing, doesn't click with his understanding of what kingship is about. It doesn't fit with the world's expectation and understanding of what a king ought to be. Pilate's expectation of Jesus as king is tied closely to his experience of what it means to be in the presence of the emperor, to be in the presence of someone who rules by force, who by force of arms, by might, gets what he wants, does as he pleases, and who presents himself with splendor, uh, with pomp, with circumstance, who keeps himself walled off from his people. Later Roman emperors, even when you came into their presence, you would bow down and you would stay bowed down long enough for someone to turn the wheels that would raise the throne up so that it was dozens of feet above you so that when you stood back up, you literally had to look up at the figure of the emperor. That's his, expect his expectation of what kingship is. And so when Jesus stands before him, he talks about how his kingdom isn't like that. It isn't an earthly kingship, but it's one that is based on self-giving, one that is based on service, one that is based on offering the completeness of his very being as king, as lord. And it's that understanding that our second lesson, the reading from Revelation, speaks to us about when we hear about how we, as people who acclaim Jesus as lord, as people who follow him, as people who have been baptized into his life, into his ministry, into his death, into his resurrection, have been made a kingdom of priests to serve him. And so this day, this week, I invite all of us to think about what does that mean for us? What, is, what does it mean for us to understand that we, who have been called to acclaim Jesus as king, as lord, what does it mean for us to understand ourselves as people who have been made worthy to stand before him, to offer ourselves, as some of our older Eucharistic prayers say, our very souls, our minds, our bodies, in service to Christ and in service to God's mission in the world, reconciling all people to each other and to God. I invite you to think about that this week and think about what that would mean for you as together we say, the, we say the words, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen.